All right, this is a wrap up, just covering a few loose ends with the denomination series. I didn't really address the view of homosexuality within the denominations I w as I went through. Um, just know this one here on it. Episcopalian, they have openly gay and non-celibate clergy. ELCA is the Lutheran denomination in America that has openly gay celibate clergy. Methodist, um, they're split within the congregations, my understanding on where they stand on this. I don't think they've made an official uh, decision. Uh, Presbyterian Church, USA, and again, it doesn't mean the Presbyterian Church like in the USA. Like it means the that's the official name of the split within the Presbyterian Church in America. All right, so the name of the denomination is Presbyterian Church, USA. They have openly gay, non celibate clergy as well. Uh, for women clergy, some Presbyterian churches have this. Some Lutheran churches have it. Methodist churches have it, and Episcopalian churches have it. And in my understanding, Methodist Church. Um, is the first denomination that um, had women ordained. Uh, what's interesting here, I don't have anything about the Roman Catholics or the Orthodox listed, right? So um, I know as much as sometimes Protestants may bag on the Roman Catholic Church for some of the teachings that they have, which are not found in Scripture, I find it very interesting that, um, at least on Scripture, they take a very strong scriptural stance against abortion, and against homosexuality, that both of those um, are sinful acts, all right? And obviously, we move into a whole other realm. Is homosexuality a sin, or is it homosexual acts, right? Uh, I don't want to touch on that. Um, there's a lot that can be discussed on that one, I guess. But no, I'm just, I think it's very interesting that the Roman Catholics have taken such a strong stand, and they're very active against abortion, um, and against gay marriage in America. And I think it's something that the Protestants likely could step in and um, stand beside them with a little bit more. Uh, if you want to know the doctrine of a denomination, most of them, of course, have these confessions. Something that I've noticed is that when I say, are confessions good? I asked that on a discussion board. Um, is it good for a denomination to have confessions or to have a confession? And most people took that to mean, like, confession of sins, right? That's not what I mean. What this is, is as a, as a group, as a congregation, as a denomination, we all agree that as our faith, we confess X, Y, and Z, right? Concerning scripture. And so we all um, then will come to different conclusions, right? On God's word. Um, and I think there are many reasons for why that is. But if you want to know what a denomination teaches, you need to look at their confessions. And so I listed here the, the main confessions of various denominations here. Roman Catholic, the Catechism of the Catholic Church is a great place to go for um, accessing what the church teaches and believes. It's available at vatican.va. You have the Book of Concord for Lutherans. Lutherans need to subscribe to the Book of Concord. Um, LCMS.org and ELCA.org, those are two homepages of um, two of the Lutheran denominations in America. Presbyterians, if you want to know what they believe in teaching, go to the Westminster Catechism. John Calvin wrote that. And when it comes to um, Presbyterians, they don't, I don't think every single split within the Presbyterian Church holds to the Westminster Catechism. And of course, some hold to the Westminster Catechism and some other um, confessions or creeds. So, um, but I think that's a, that's a great start to begin with for Presbyterian. Episcopalian Church, they have the Book of Common Prayers, which contains in it the 39 Articles of Religion. And then you have the Methodist, and John Wesley started within the Church of England and broke away eventually, where it was kicked out, right? Um, so very similar then with some of their stuff. So he worked off of the 39 Articles of Religion and made his revision to just have 25 articles. For Methodists, you can also then look at the doctrines and discipline of the Methodist Church. Baptists, they just have the Bible as a confession of faith. You ask a Baptist what they believe, they'll say, well, I believe in the Bible. Yeah, but what do you believe concerning what the Bible teaches? I believe what the Bible teaches. And you can just go in circles forever on that, um, trying to figure out what they actually believe and teach, um, because they completely reject the idea of subscribing to a confession as being an accurate representation of what Scripture teaches. Uh, so if you want to know what a Baptist believes, look at the denomination or congregation's websites. And that's kind of necessary, I think, too, because um, as I mentioned in the previous videos, 
uh, Baptist can be divided, Calvinist or Armenian, which I think is pretty interesting that that can take place. So you can have some Baptists who refuse and say infant baptism isn't scriptural, yet still hold to Calvin's uh, double predestination or tulip structure. Then you got the Assembly of God. Uh, the Assembly of God has a set list of doctrines that they all hold to, um, and that can be found on their website, ag.org. All right, so that's a, that's a wrap-up of some information that I think is still good to know um, when it comes to interacting with and experiencing Christian denominations within America. And as a final parting word on this, all of this is necessary, I think, to know because you can end up in a town where the denomination you've always been a part of in your life isn't existent. And then you have to start looking around, where where should I go to church? What do they believe? Why do they believe it? Um, and if you already know some of this going in, I think you're going to be a lot better off than just popping in randomly in a church. Also, um, it's good to know just um, when people ask questions like, why are there so many denominations in the church? Uh, which one's the right one? Uh, you would be able to have a good basic understanding of what they teach. And then when someone then brings up the objection that I don't think there needs to be any divisions in the church, God doesn't want these divisions, you can then look at it and ask and, and say, like, well, no, like, these divisions arise because of this teaching, this teaching, this teaching, this teaching, and um, show how those teachings affect other doctrines and how they interlink and how if God's word is God's word, we would really want to pursue it and desire to accurately teach it um, as God has intended for it to be taught as what truth is. And um, obviously some denominations then um, maybe go so far now, the very liberal ones or the very liberal branches of them go so far to say no one can really know what God actually meant here, right? And I don't think we need to go that far whatsoever. I think we should just recognize that we're sinful human beings and that our, our reason is tainted by sin, our experiences are tainted by sin, and we have sinful hearts. And with all that together, it's going to be very difficult for us to... Um, go to the Word of God, which is holy and perfect and good, and to be able to accurately discern it, uh, which is why 1 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 4, says that we need the Holy Spirit in order to discern and understand God's Word. And so if you still don't have a denomination of your own, I would just encourage you to read God's Word, uh, pray um, for help understanding it, and ask yourself, what are you basing your theology on? Are you using reason and scripture together? Is reason going above scripture? Um, are you leaning upon what human authority says instead of what scripture says? Are you using tradition as a guide for your doctrines? Uh, just put all that together. Obviously, um, coming from a Lutheran point of view, we try to strive for um, scripture alone as the ultimate source and norm of our theology. And so for, for me, what I'm going through now is checking all the teachings I have and asking, okay, can I show that teaching in Scripture and use Scripture alone? And if not, do I need to change this teaching? Is, what's, what's influencing it? Um, should I then say in this regard, I don't know, instead of teaching something that I can't actually show and support in Scripture? So I, that's something I would encourage everyone um, who's watched this series to do. All right, peace, and I hope that this series has been helpful to you.